back to this <laughs> Kat Cosgrove how are you today I am excellent how are you fantastic so you know we did an interview and we talked about something that I think is more frightening than anything out there right now and that is gatekeeping so let's let's talk about this you know we had to talk about this in the interview but I want you to tell me what is it for the uninitiated and yeah, you know, all that. There are two different types of gatekeeping. In my mind, there's intentional gatekeeping and unintentional gatekeeping. Intentional gatekeeping is insidious and widespread in the tech industry. Uh, a good example of that is, for instance, in InfoSec. Sometimes when uh, a woman or just someone who is not a man doesn't really matter what their gender identity is, somebody who is not a man uh, asserts their expertise in a particular field and somebody shows up uh generally this is you know a dude shows up and either implies or directly says that uh their expertise is irrelevant and in fact they aren't experts because they don't have a cve or something like that that's like insidious intentional gatekeeping preventing a particular type of person from being uh, welcome or even existing in a particular space. You see this a lot with uh, women and people who are not white in tech being, uh, the, the bar is artificially raised for entry. Unintentional gatekeeping is just as much of a problem, but it isn't necessarily rooted in, um, hatred, you know, they're not, we're not intentionally trying to keep someone out when we're doing that kind of gatekeeping. And that looks like uh, not writing intro level content, uh, requiring a four-year computer science degree for a junior developer position. It's not really necessary a lot of the time, but uh, the easiest way for us to address the unintentional type of gatekeeping is to be more careful about our language and the words we use and the way we explain things. It's really easy to forget what it's like to not know everything about a tool or a space or a particular sector of tech. It's super easy to forget that, especially if you've been in the industry for 15 or 20 years. I do it. I'm sure Pop does it. We don't mean to do it. And it takes like active effort to undo some of that harm. And it's not just beneficial for newbies in a space. It's beneficial for you because really anybody who is new to your product or your tool or your corner of technology, even if they have 15 years of experience, they're still a newbie and you have to talk to them like one. You cannot assume that everybody reading your documentation is you. You can't assume that everybody has all of this like contextual domain specific knowledge. So it's a little bit more effort on your part. You do have to define words more clearly. You can't use abbreviations all the time. If you do, you have to define it the first time you use it. And it's just a little bit more work, but it makes your documentation more approachable. It makes your tools more appealing to new users. And it doesn't make junior engineers feel bad about themselves because Imposter syndrome is a real problem. Let's not, let's not make it worse. So insidious gatekeeping, not a lot we can do about that aside from uh, aggressively correcting people who we see behave that way. Unintentional gatekeeping, 
that requires just a little bit of effort on the part of all of us. So one person cannot fix that. We all have to fix that, but it's just a little bit of work for everybody. And then it solves the problem. So let's, let's do that, please. So, so folks, it's off our circus again, to me, it is the most horrific thing that's in the, in, you know, the, in the industry right now. And, and again, you know, on the show, which aired yesterday, you can all can check it out. Um, you know, podcast, you can follow it on Twitter, podcast pop, but, um, we go cat, we go in depth on that and horror movies and, you know, we had a, we had a fun time. And so like, I want you all to see this, but again, like we, uh, they were, they'd ask them um, the folks from software circus, like, Hey, you, you want to come in? And I'm like, only if I can bring cat. <laughs> And we had this thing, it was like, you know, the whole let me in thing. And we were, you know, we put this together and I'm like, Kat, what do you think of this? And, you know, just, we, we, we've had such a fantastic time doing this, but again, gatekeeping is real and you all should, uh, you know, take notice of the things that's going on. Let's check out the episode. Hey Kat, you got anything coming up that you want to hype and or anything like that? I do. In my efforts to try to end unintentional gatekeeping, I have put together a workshop uh, DevOps 101. It's in its very early, like little baby stages, but I worked really hard on it. And I've given it a couple of times at this point, making some refinements over and over again. But both of the times I've given it so far um, have been at conferences. So not quite as like widely accessible. But at the end of November, uh, November 19th, I believe, I will be giving it just through uh, JFrog, my employer's webinar platform, just for free, everybody. You don't need to be like a super hotshot engineer to do this workshop, but you just need to have a GitHub account and get set up on your terminal, Docker installed, Python 3.6, and we'll walk you through it. And I would love for you to attend if you yourself don't, need a DevOps 101 intro course, you probably know somebody who would benefit from it. So come see me do that. I would like to teach you some stuff. One of the best in the biz. And I'm so glad Ooh. to call you a friend. Um, <laughs> I got, I got, I got some hype to do. All right. And when I'm not, you know, Hi. scaring people with the wolf, wolf stuff, uh, I got a KubeCon talk coming up. Uh, it's my first KubeCon talk. They took pity oh, on congratulations. me. Thank you very much. Yeah. And the full week of, of uh, KubeCon, we're going to be doing an episode every day. And it's be with some insane guests, like probably the best guests. I mean, all of my guests have been fantastic. It's been, I, and I'm, I'm so, so blessed to have the people that I've had thus far, you included. Um, you. But basically we have a full list and I'm going to do a reveal of these during the course of the week. You know, great sponsors. And we've donated a, a lot of money to Code 2040. We, we donated $2,500 to Code 2040. Um, you know, and we're going to continue to do that for anybody who would like to sponsor the podcast. But again, um, Kat, that's that's pretty much all I got. And you want to, any parting words for our friends in Software Circus, our friends in, uh, in Europe? Mm. Be nice to people. I feel like that shouldn't be like difficult or revolutionary, but we're all going through like some really hard stuff right now, whether we admit it to ourselves or not. And just, just being a little nicer to people than usual goes a long way, you know, show, show people a little bit of grace. Um, also watch more horror movies, like watch more horror movies it's spooky it's the season for it it's all i've watched this whole month literally nothing but horror so you know watch more horror there is a horror movie for everybody if you tell me that you don't like horror i don't believe you you have not found the right subgenre yet come talk to me awesome <laughs> and uh, like i said check out our episode again it's uh you know popcast go to a popcast a pop and uh enjoy the rest of the show it's been phenomenal thank you <laughs>